Welcome dear students to the third lecture in unit 1 of strategic human resource management. Uh, we have already discussed about an introduction of SHRM and the various models in SHRM. Now in today's uh, class, we are going to talk about the development of strategic human resource management and I am Dr. Tripti Barthwal, Director Lal Bahadur Shastri Institute of Management and Development Studies, Lucknow. Uh, so, uh, students, uh, SHRM uh, basically as you know that it is made up of two terms, strategy and human resource management. So, it is but obvious that SHRM owes its origins to human resource management and to the development of strategy as a field of study, right. So, um, but history shows us that the utilization of human resource was present in different times and played very important role. So, if we look at the history, uh, the biggest of the wars or you know the, the great monuments we have today, uh, Taj Mahal in Agra or the Leaning Tower of Pisa or the pyramids of Egypt. Uh, can you just imagine that uh, would all these marvelous uh, you know creations could have been created without the proper utilization of human resource management, without you know putting people into various jobs and responsibilities, uh, assigning them duties and then uh, monitoring their actions, uh, making them develop the required skills, compensating for their work, uh, you know appraising their performance. So, do you think that that would have been possible? I do not think that it would have been possible without the proper utilization of human resources. So, it is very obvious throughout the history that even as I said the biggest of wars were won by the strategies which kind of used the uh, best of the warriors uh, in the best possible way in the best possible positions. So, however, uh, still though we have lot of evidences in history uh, which say that yes human resource uh, played a very, very important role, but it is very difficult to uh, trace down actually from where human resource management started. What was that exact point uh, from where it started? So, uh, only we can uh, you know talk about certain developments, certain uh, you know situations, certain uh, things which cropped up and as a result of that we can say that from there probably uh, the, the business and the managers and the people, own, owners, entrepreneurs, they started uh, thinking more in the lines of human resource management. So, as has been mentioned, certain developments indicate the emergence of HRM as a distinct field and they primarily owe their existence to the process of industrialization. So, the process of industrialization started and there were certain changes as I said because of which it can be said that from there probably there was a mindset related to human resource management. Now, when we talk about the initial changes, what were those changes? Uh, one of the pioneer industrialists was Robert Owen, uh, who was a Scottish textile manufacturer who in 1813 wrote a book entitled A New View of Society. He built model worker villages by his cotton mills at Scotland. Uh, now, you must have uh, read about Robert Owen, uh, I am sure in your industrial relations paper also that he was a great uh, industrialist and he was also a philanthropist, a social reformer who, uh, whose uh, purpose to start an industry was not merely to earn money and to make profits out of it, but he was also consider, uh, co considerate enough to look into the working conditions of the workers. And uh, he was appalled by the miserable uh, conditions under which workers had to work in factories. They had to work for continuously long stretches of uh, you know hours and without any breaks. And uh, they were not given any weekly offs or nothing 
of that sort. So, it was a condition of total exploitation, they did not have uh, you know sanitary uh, living conditions also, uh, did not have proper you know airy ventilated places to live also and to work also. So, uh, he was moved uh, because of all these things and as a result he built decent health and sanitation facilities in his factories and established schools for children and workers. Eventually, he abolished child labor in his mills. He took genuine interest in the welfare of the people. So, that is the important thing that for the first time in the recorded history, there was this person who actually took interest in uh, not only uh, how things were getting done and how much money was being earned, but also on the workers who were making uh, the company or the business earn money. So, after that uh, once you know strategic uh, so, sorry human resource management came into being and you know people started thinking on those lines, uh, then you know then the human relations approach also came in and then there, there were very lot of thinkers and then in the because we are not looking at the history of human resource management, but we are looking at the history of SHRM. So, uh, coming back to 1980 now, uh, Armstrong was a, was a person who started writing more about the approach of strategic human resource management for the management of people as compared to the traditional methods of industrial relations. So, uh, he, he, he was of the view that the traditional methods of you know industrial relations like management controlling the workers and you know uh, everything uh, being under a very, very centralized control uh, of the owners or the capital. Uh, he, he said that uh, uh, you know he, he talked about SHRM and uh, he talked about uh, that resources, human resources the people should be uh, dealt with or they should be managed in a strategic manner. Then the increasing importance of people to organizational success corresponds with the rise of strategic human resource management as a field of study worldwide. So, uh, you know after that what happened that as I said that people started uh, realizing the importance of human resource management to the organizational structures and as a result of that uh, this uh, concept of SHRM gained more ground. Then the HR concept has been actually redesigned according to the strategic needs of the environment which becomes the SHRM. So, at this point this needs to be emphasized that the HR concept has been actually redesigned. You know certain changes have been made in the uh, HR concept according to the strategic needs of the environment because the environment of the organization was changing very fast and it was considered very, very important and imperative that if an organization has to adapt itself according to the change in the environment, then it is first the people who should uh, understand and acknowledge that change, it is the human resource which needs to actually respond to that change and that is why it is very important to uh, attach that strategic to human resource management. Then the concept of strategic HRM was first formulated by Fombrun, Tichy and Devana in 1984 who wrote that three core elements are necessary for firms to function effectively. So, uh, Armstrong uh, he in 1980s he started writing about uh, SHRM, but as such he did he, he talked about how it is important, uh, but he did not give any uh, sort of a framework for strategic HRM, but these three scholars Fombrun, Tichy and Devana in 1984 that they said there are three core elements which are necessary for firms to function effectively. The first is the mission and strategy of the organization. So, mission I am sure that uh, you have 
studied a paper on strategic management and you know what is mission, what is a strategy, mission uh, you know what is a vision that is the long term, uh, you know what the organization where it wants to reach, how it wants to reach and then what are, uh, how, how it, it you know what it does, how does it plan to achieve uh, that goal. So, that is mission and strategy. Then the next is organizational culture. In organizational culture, you know that there is a shared system of beliefs, assumptions, values uh, which guide, which act as a common thread in the entire organization. And the third is of course, when we are talking about strategic human resource management, then the third factor which becomes very, very essential is HRM. So, now you see that with HRM, two very important elements have been added which uh, you know kind of encompass the entire organization which are not meant for a particular department or a particular unit, they cover the entire organization and hence uh, now HRM takes the shape of strategic human resource management. Now going forward Fombrun and uh, his associates, they define strategy as a process through which the basic mission and objectives of the organization are set and a process through which the organization uses its resources to achieve its objectives. But their most important conclusion was that HR systems and organizational structure should be managed in a way which is congruent with organizational strategy. So, the most common important conclusion given by them was that all the systems of HRM and the structure of the organization should be managed in such a way which is kind of complementary with the organizational strategy. So, now HRM is not a stand alone function anymore, it has to align or it needs to be aligned uh, with the business strategy, overall strategy of the organization. Otherwise, what happens? The strategy of the organization fails, the organization fails to realize its vision because the HR strategy has not been aligned with it. The main focus of SHRM is on the long term objectives of the firm. So, when it once it is being aligned with the mission, the strategy, the organizational culture, then the focus of SHRM becomes the long term objectives of the firm. The fundamental concept of SHRM is based on the assumption that human resource strategy can contribute to business strategy, but is also justified by it. Now, a very important uh, point here is that the assumption uh, behind SHRM is that human resource strategy can contribute to the business strategy, that is for sure. This we have already discussed that the if, if the organization's business strategy has to be achieved, then human resource strategy has to be aligned with it. So, that is for sure, but is also justified by it. This is very important that if, if whatever we are doing in human resource management, whatever plans and policies we are making should be justifiable according to the strategy of the organization. We should not make a HR plan, we should not make or devise an HR policy which is anything irrelevant to the strategy of the organization. Otherwise, that HR plan or policy does not hold any significance or any value. It goes beyond the functional role of HRM and emphasizes proactive HRM. So, what happens as a result of this? As a result of this, human resource management, it no longer remains a functional role. Functional role means just a departmental role, just confined to that particular department only. It becomes a proactive HRM that is and a uh, human resource function now assumes a proactive role that is it has not only to react to changes in the environment and devise, devise strategies accordingly, but it also has to anticipate that what can be 
the impact of the environmental changes on the organization and be prepared in advance to uh, with the uh, you know updation of the employees or with the deployment of employees or with their acquisition or maybe with the layoffs so that uh, you know strategies can be achieved as the planning has been done so accordingly there is no delay or there is no uh, sense of loss you know that the opportunity has gone and we were not prepared for it because our people were not prepared for it the validity of this concept depends to the extent to which it is believed that people create competitive advantage and should therefore be treated as a strategic resource now this entire uh, whatever assumptions we have drawn it depends on, uh, to a large extent uh, it is it depends on the belief that people create competitive advantage and therefore uh, why hr function should be so important because people are the most important resource of an organization they are actually the strategic resource of the organization if we are making a plan for the long term then we have to take into consideration the 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 people uh, resource or the human resource we have at hand otherwise uh, we may have the best of the resources but we will lose Uh, against competition because our human resource was not up to the mark or it was not updated or ready at the time when we required it then shrm requires a shift towards more macro perspective in which it is applied uh, at a broader level of the organization so now the perspective of uh, hrm is not micro uh, within a confined to a specific department but it is now overlooking the entire organization so it is now being applied at a broader level now again a very famous scholar in the area of shrm guest he believes that the driving force behind hrm is the pursuit of competitive advantage in the marketplace through provision of high quality goods and services through competitive pricing linked to high productivity and through the cap capacity swiftly to innovate and manage change in response to changes in the marketplace or to break breakthroughs in research and development so he basically sums up the entire business and says that if you want to do research and development if you want to do uh, if you want to achieve competitive advantage through r&d if you want to innovate if you want to you know uh, respond to changes in the marketplace if you want to go for competitive pricing if through high productivity if you want high quality goods and services and through all these you want to achieve a competitive advantage uh, then it is very very important that you focus on human resource because competitive advantage under all these areas cannot be achieved unless you are focusing on your human resource then another set of scholars right and snell 1989 suggested that in a business strategic hrm deals with those hr activities used to support the firm's competitive strategy so again the same thing they have emphasized that uh, basically shrm is dealing with those activity which are supporting the firm's uh, competitive strategy then walker in 1992 defines shrm as the means of aligning the management of human resources with the strategic content of the business and boxel 1991 expressed the view that critical concerns of human resource management are integral integral to strategic management in any business so all these scholars are um, uh, you know once again am reemphasizing the importance of uh, taking human resource management as a strategic function so uh, he says that it is a means of aligning management of human resources with the strategic content of the business and he says that critical concerns of hr management are integral to strategic management in any business then another set of scholars 
Tyson and Witcher in 1994 considered that human resource strategy can only be studied in the context of corporate and business strategy. Uh, he goes a step further and says that there is no other way by which you can study human resource management. You cannot study it in isolation unless you uh, set it in reference or in context to the business strategies. Then uh, next set of scholars, Henry and Pettigrew, 1986 put forward four meanings of SHRM. The first is use of planning in human resource management which is uh, also called as human resource planning and which is very, very important because it is only through that we come to know that what will be the future uh, demand for human, resource ma uh, human resources in the organization, what will be the various sources of supply, how we will uh, bring together the demand and supply, how will we bridge the gap between demand and supply and then how will we uh, put our uh, plans into HR plans into action. So, that is one meaning. The second meaning is an integrated approach to the design and implementation of HR systems. So, whatever the various sub functions of HR uh, are there, they should be uh, integrated with each other. They should not be moving in different directions. They should be integrated and properly implemented, matching HRM policies and activities with the business strategy of the organization. This is again important. As I st said in the start also, the, the you can formulate the best of strategies, best of policies, HR policies, but they will uh, of be of no use, they will not give any value to the organization unless they are set in tune with the business strategy and viewing people as a strategic resource for the achievement of competitive advantage. This is the most important part that unless you believe as an organization that your success uh, all the success of the strategies are all dependent on people who are responsible for their implementation, as for their execution, uh, you will not be able to derive results from the best of the strategies. So, uh, if we uh, you know try to uh, see it in a diagrammatic form, then um, uh, what whatever we have discussed till now, uh, if we take HRM on one side, HRM which uh, came into being in a full fledged way uh, earlier it was uh, personal management then we moved on to human resource management. So, we will not say that you know uh, uh, strategic human resource management is an improvement over uh, human resource management. It is only you know uh, taking it uh, to a wider perspective, a bigger perspective to an organizational wide perspective. If we take a look at HRM from that perspective. Uh, from its uh, relevance as a function which can uh, help the organization achieve competitive advantage, uh, then uh, we realize that uh, SHRM is uh, an extension of human resource management which takes a broader and a bigger picture, uh, organizational wide picture of managing human resources and which not only takes uh, employees as uh, resources, but it also it takes employees as the most important resources and rather than most important resources, those resources which are the strategic resources without whom uh, the strategy cannot be realized. So, if we look at uh, human resource management, uh, whatever the developments of human resource management indicate that uh, HRM is a part of an organic organization. Organic organization means which is flexible, which is adaptive, which is uh, you know responding to whatever are the changing needs of the organization. So, it is designing policies according to them. Then cross hierarchical teams that is uh, you know there is more of uh, teamwork, uh, there is no um, uh, strict hierarchies, formality is less. Uh, it, it is the work is more important, the tasks are more important and who can do those tasks best that is most important rather than who is senior and who is junior. Then decentralized uh, most of the decision making is uh, given to uh, the people at different levels at those levels where they can handle it the best. So, it is not the, strat the top management which is taking all the decisions related to human resource, low formalization. 
the formal structure, there is less belief on formal rules and regulations. Everything does not need to be written like your personal management, uh, it is more of a bureaucratic in nature. Everything has to be followed by the book uh, and everything has to be you know uh, in the written form. Uh, here it is less formalization and of course, it is flexible, it is an organic organization, so it is flexible. And it can be like if its policy has been made today and if we feel that after a month there needs to be a change, uh, not only because of the environment, but because we feel that some organization is doing something better than us in terms of HR policies, then we can change accordingly. And as we move from uh, HRM to strategic, HR, uh, uh, strategic human resource management in the early 1980s, then what do we see? We see convergence between HRM and business strategy. So, now uh, they are aligned to with each other. Now, they are not uh, you know in isolated uh, towers, uh, they are not in isolated compartments, they kind of interact, they kind of have gelled together. Then we also uh, see proactive human resource management. Uh, that is a human resource management which does not wait uh, for you know the environment to make changes and then you know see that what changes have been made in the marketing, what changes have been made in uh, finance and what changes have been made in R and D and then okay then we will you know train and recruit people accordingly. No, it is a proactive HRM because it is aligned to the strategy. So, before the changes come, they can anticipate and they can uh, design their strategies accordingly and concerned with organizational effectiveness and performance. So, the whole focus of human resource management uh, earlier was like the, the, the departmental objectives should be achieved. The functional, uh, the manager, HR manager should perform his functional uh, duties or his operative functions uh, in the best possible manner, right. But now, today, the, the view has broadened, the canvas is much larger and the today's uh, human resource management who is doing strategic human resource managing, he is more concerned now. He is not only concerned about his department, but he is also focusing that the organizational effectiveness and performance should be as expected. And this is what is expected out of him that he should play or she should play his most important role in you know maintaining that performance of the organization, that level of the organization. So, this is how we have moved from HRM to SHRM and as I said, it is not uh, something which has an improvement over HRM, but yes, it is definitely a bigger and broader picture. It is giving a much more important, significant and key role to the human resource department. So, uh, I am, I hope that you have been able to understand how the concept of strategic human resource has developed over a period of time. Thank you.